songwriters there. Hallelujah. Because the captain's already gone. Hallelujah. We're going to sit by the banks of the river of Jordan. Hallelujah. Yeah. St. Matthew's 22, 37 to the 40th verse. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thy shall love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang, hang, hang. all the law and the prophets. Hallelujah. You need a spiritual tuna. You need a spiritual tuna. St. Matthew's 12, 30 and 31st verse. St. Matthew's 12, St. Mark. Excuse me. 30 and 31st verse. St. Mark 12 and 30 and 31st verse. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Get about the Ten Commandments Moses was talking about, your forefather. You better concentrate on these two. You need a spiritual tuna. St. Luke 10. 27 to the 28 verse. St. Luke 10, 28, 27 to the 28 verse. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do and thou shalt live. Right. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down. Nope. Stop at the 28th verse. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do and thou. It's a 10, 27, and 28. Excuse me. 10, 27, 28 of St. Luke. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Matthew. St. Matthew. 22 and 37, 40. St. Mark. 20, 12 and 30 and 31. And now St. Luke 10, chapter 27, 28, saying the same thing. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love thy, thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, do, this do, and thou shalt live. If you don't do them two commandments that I read, from those three passages in the Bible, those three scriptures, you're not going to live. All right. Amen. But every now and then, you need to read them. 
Because you need a spiritual tune up. Come on, Amen, Bishop. Bishop. Need the spot plugs checked out. Amen. Right. Come on, Need the battery checked out. Come on, with it. Because your engine is not going to operate. Right. Your spirit is not going to operate. Yes. Hallelujah. You don't forget about what you hear and what the purpose of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be working in you. You don't forget about that purpose. Uh -huh. Your purpose is to see about. Oh, you may sit down. Please. Amen. There are tons of people leaving the institutional churches. I'm talking to the leadership today. I'm talking to pastors today. I'm talking to bishops and apostles today. There are tons of people leaving the institutional churches. Millions of them per year. Why is this? Because they don't feel like their individual needs are getting addressed. Uh -uh -uh. Come on, Bishop. They may sit through a good sermon that has some like of applications, but they don't see or feel the radical transformation. Well, what you talking about that radical transformation? They don't feel like the way our church was carrying on a few minutes ago. Like they were radical off the chain. Coming buck wild for Jesus. Throwing they self. Hallelujah. Clothes going one way, body going another way. Because the Spirit of God was upon them. He was anointing them for His purposes. He was delivering them. Hallelujah. Set their souls free. Because we don't know what we're going to use. We don't know what we're going to need next week. We don't know what lies ahead of us. We don't know what danger lies ahead of us. We don't know. But while we're here, we're going to get a special you Jesus. Yes. They must sit through a good sermon that has some life application but they don't see or feel the radical transformation yes. that should come as a part of the normal Christian life. Every time you come into church you should get a radical reaction. Something different should happen to you. It is nothing but shedding tears. It is nothing but throwing up your hand. Something you ought to feel. The power of God. How do you act out in you? Come on. What? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, they don't feel. They, 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 they miss the transformation that should come as a part of the normal Christian life. Or worse, or worse, they have a crisis or a need and nobody in the church responds appropriately. Hallelujah. No one calls them out. They don't never get a touch from their pastor. Never get a touch from their bishop. Never get a touch, hallelujah, from the prophets. We got all these big churches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Millions and millions of people. Hallelujah. Leadership is leading you right to hell. Hallelujah. Because the same way you came in as millions, same way you leaving out as millions. Wretched and undone. Untouched by the power of God. They're seeking for a little church like this that holds 100. People are seeking for a church like this. For a leadership like this. Someone that can discern your spirit. Someone to tell you about the future. Someone that can lay their hands on you and cast out a demon before it destroy you. Someone to help raise your children. The world is looking for somebody to shout out for God. I'm talking to you leadership, prophets and bishops today. Come on, Bishop. Come on, Bishop. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You need a spiritual tune-up. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're lacking something. 
Amen. The engine's not running right. Amen. We're not having, we're not honoring God. We are singing and dancing and pretending everything is fine. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. They even got the praise dancers. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. All over the television. That's fine and cool. Hallelujah. That's fine. That's nice. They even teach the young people how to dance and shout. Hallelujah. They got fancy dances now. Sound all across the floor. Hallelujah. That's all right. That's cool. Hallelujah. But you ought to be teaching the children how to live right. How to put down the pornography. How to put down the blunt. How to put down the acid. Angel dust. Hallelujah. How to put down the spray can. The spray paint. The fine and different ways how to make drugs. You ought to be teaching the young people the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But you can't teach the young people because you haven't been taught as a leader. Alright, my old man, Bishop. You better go ahead now. Bible said the blind lead the blind, they all gonna fall in the ditch. That's it. So true, so true. Hallelujah. We are not honoring God. We are singing and dancing and pretending everything is fine. While people are bleeding to death in the pews, not to mention in the streets, because streets have no love. Listen to me. God does not want you to praise and worship him while you're ignoring the person sitting next to you who is having a crisis. You don't know what we are going through. Amen. But everyone take one look at your neighbor. Yes. Grab their hand. Yes. And say, I care. I care. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And I believe that God. Going to see you through. Gonna see you through. Everything, everything. If you believe. If you believe. Hallelujah. For you to raise your hand and tell him how great he is. While you fail to act like him and heal those near, nearest to you. It doesn't mean a thing if you're raising your hands and telling God how great he is. If you, doesn't, if you don't realize your sister and brother next to you is in trouble. Come on, man. It don't mean a thing. Show it on. Heal them or at least treat them. And then you can go on praising and worshiping and telling him how great he is after you do that. Come on. He, he's, he's just, he just does not want to hear you singing while you're ignoring people and crying inside he don't want you to know our people while they're crying inside Amen. your prayers are going to bounce off the brass over your head Amen. until you get it like Jesus All right. until you get that caring love and you care about the next person next to you Come on. and you forget about yourself Come on. it's not about you anyway it's all about Jesus. Yeah. When you can forget about yourself just one moment. Yeah. When you can forget about what you're going through. Yeah. And look at somebody else's storm. Yeah. How many know it's a blessing in a storm? Yeah. If you can weather your storm and help somebody else yeah. conquer their storm. Just give somebody else an umbrella. Or, or tell them under your umbrella. Let 
listening to me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You preach it. Just knock it off. Or else he, he's not going to ignore the cries much longer. Hallelujah. Jesus. God ain't playing this one. God ain't playing this one with these pastors and leadership because I'm sick of them. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sick of them taking tithes and offerings and they ain't doing nothing for the people. You better preach, Bishop. People are dying every day of cancer, diabetes, and AIDS. Amen. When the last time you don't heal somebody remains. Amen. When the last time you don't heal a cancer patient. I want sus I want Minister Smith to stand right there. Yes. Hallelujah. I want her to stand right there and let the camera see that she once was a cancer patient. Hallelujah. Don't have. Amen. 
Yeah, I'm talking to you. Come on with it. Come on, Bishop. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure which one would be the bigger, bigger miracle. The people of God needs, hallelujah, to be trained up in how to rapidly identify the physical, emotional, and spiritual warfare oppressing. You, uh, my kids, and uh, everybody in the church wonder why I fast on Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I attended a party, a birthday party last night. And we got home at 12 o'clock. And I was going to get, I was going to eat my steak and potatoes. Hallelujah. And I was going to drink my, hallelujah, Poland Spring. But it immediately, hallelujah, when I had warmed it up in the oven, took it out, put it on the plate. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, stop. You know that you fast. Hallelujah. On Sunday. So I can use you. Yeah. Hallelujah. To sit quietly while the church is on fire with God. Yeah. And I use you to scope out what's going on and what the people need. Yeah. Through the church. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can't do it on a full stomach. You can't do it pleasing the flesh. But you gotta deny yourself. something today. Yes. Hallelujah. The people of God needs to be trained up in how to rapidly identify the physical, emotional, and spiritual warfare oppressing their neighbors, everybody. Amen. Killing them. Killing their brethren. They need to be empowered. Hallelujah. To go on and treat them on the spot. Hallelujah. You that sitting up there that are evangelists. You that sit that out there that are elders, ministers. Hallelujah. You ought to be spiritually equipped. You ought to fast at least once a week. So God can torture you when you enter the building. Hallelujah. About the neighbor that's sitting by you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it takes you to grab their hand and to say, it's going to be all right, brother. It's going to be all right, sister. Sometimes you ought to get off the stool and do nothing and say, God told me to tell you this. For encouraging words, whisper in their ear. Nobody else have to hear it. You got to be ministers of Christ. You got to prove yourself to God and your neighbor that you love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul that God can use you and exercise the gift of God in you on the spot. Stop coming to church for your own worth, for your own gratification. Hallelujah, just to see Sister Sally. Hallelujah, just to see Brother Tony. Hallelujah, stop trying to impress everybody. But come to church, hallelujah, to do God's purpose. Come to church for God to get the glory out of your life. Because he's going to get it anyway. Amen. Can I get amen? Amen. Don't get quiet on me now. The music needs to stop until everybody in your camp is bandaged up. You know, like everybody was in the hospital a few minutes ago. I believe, hallelujah, they was in the psych ward. Everybody was in the psych, the psych ward. Everybody was buck wild. Everybody was radical. Hallelujah, they all got their bandages on now. 
Now we got their medicine. Everybody got their medicine, what they need. So they're all attentive to the word of God. Amen. This is how God wants this church to operate. Amen. Come on, Bishop. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. The music needs to stop until everybody in your camp is bandaged up. Church will not be the church until it stops being a show. Amen. Everybody wants a show. Everybody wants praise dancers, and that's all right. I love praise dancers. Everybody wants the little kids to run up here. Hallelujah, and dance with the prophet. They said one, two, three. Let us all dance. Hallelujah. He said, one, two, three, this side then. That's not how it operates. Hallelujah. You operate through the Spirit of God. Yeah. When the Spirit of God touches you, huh? Hallelujah. Immediately, hallelujah, you can heal on the spot. You immediately, God will go inside of you immediately. It's not a practice thing. It's not a it's not for you to be on display. Hallelujah. It's not for you, hallelujah, to be a show. Huh? This is not a gimmick. Huh? This is not a show. This is the real deal yes. over here yes. in these providence. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Church will not be a, the church until it stops being a show and start being a hospital. Didn't I just tell y'all that? Yeah. This is the hospital. We was in the sack for us. Sack, psych. First and foremost, the reason is not that now is, is, is because we addicted to pay leadership. My Lord. Uh, we, we pay the pastors to act right. I won't give you no million dollars. You don't do what I say. We got paid pastors and bishops and apostles. Hallelujah. To do all the work for us. And they and they can't possibly keep it up. Can't possibly keep it up. Kimmy going to run out sometime. Because Jesus is going to show up. In fairness, many of them got got the like in it and now don't trust the body to help them. Yes. Now they don't got like in the way they tell the pastors what to do. Uh -huh. So they don't trust the pastors they do lay their hands on them. Mm -hmm. Because you was a gimmick in a minute and you're going to be a gimmick in another hour. Mm -hmm. So the people don't get used to the gimmick. So when the real deal comes out, yeah. they ain't going to believe you. Yeah. Just like a little boy that cried fire, fire. Then when the real fire came, fire truck didn't come and got burned up. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. You keep on playing. You're going to be left. In fairness, many of them got the lack in it and now don't trust the body to help them. Yes, so it's a vicious cycle. Yeah. But it, it's got to stop. Uh -huh. The body has to learn to care for the body. Yes. Whether or not there is a paid staffer. Mm -hmm. We need the gifts of Certain, we need the gift of discernment. Yes. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Jesus can't only be one discern. We have to have these gifts. All right. Can't be one person discerning. No. And we are. We should have at least three or four people in Come here. On. Come on. Come on. Of spirits, discernment of spirits and knowledge operating in force, and we need to get back. To fulfilling the great commission. First by cleansing up the messes in sermon. In cleaning up the messes in our own congregation. Yeah. Come on, come on, Bishop. Working on our own self. Yeah. Cleaning up the, the mess. Hallelujah. Thereby going. We, we can't wait for them to come. Because when we do, they are mostly not staying and it's because they are not getting healed Amen. which is because we're not acting like Jesus so many are leaving the church hallelujah looking for a small congregation if any of this staff has, has convicted you if any of this staff anybody has been convicted out there today you million dollar churches Hallelujah. And you realize you played a part in this. 
and sustaining a system that hasn't been working or you ever ignored it or, or, or ignored it and you still have a million dollar church someone that has bleed, bleeding because of you and your agenda now would be a good time to find a quiet place Amen. if you're guilty of this any pastor, leadership, bishop, apostle, if you're guilty of having a church like this, not tending to the needs of the people, but collecting the money anyway. Uh -huh. You need to find a quiet place. Uh -huh. You need to hit your knees down on the floor and say you sorry. Amen. Cry and help God. And if you start crying, God will know you're serious. Amen. You might also want to admit it publicly to the people affected. How are they ever going to learn how to repent? Amen. Really good if someone doesn't show them. Don't wait for somebody else to repent. It has to start with you, pastors, bishops, and apostles. Don't always wait for the congregation to repent. You start repenting first. Repent that you haven't fast and prayed for a long time. Repent, hallelujah, that you have stopped in the middle of service and, and, and cast out a devil. Hallelujah. Repent. Hallelujah. That you have a drunk to someone's child. Hallelujah. About them watching pornography. And you know all along they was watching pornography. Hallelujah. And it vexed your spirit. But you kept on preaching anyway. Hallelujah. Because you couldn't wait to get to the offering plate. But we as a people of God, we as leaders, we got to stop the show and stop fasting and praying. Casting out devils doing the work of God. We got to teach the congregation to love thy neighbor as thyself. Love your brother. Hallelujah. Pray for the strengthening so you know what's going on with him. Pray that God will help you to go to your sister and brother and see what trouble they're in. You got to learn to show love. Stop saying with your mouth and show love. Right now, that day, don't let it go no further. But start right now and get a spiritual tune up. Thank you, Jesus.